Hello and welcome to Languagecraft for episode 10 of Let's Timelapse. Now to start off today, we're taking a look at what Micromega and I built last time. The big, big fort and the sheriff's office. Quite the building, I'd say, and it has a history that I feel really comes across. You feel that all the buildings came one after the other. It's a lot more interesting than just a huge construction with no story. Now today we're not going to build a particular structure, but we're going to go over everything we've done so far. We want all the buildings to have the story, like we just said uh, the fort had. And we want to break things, we want to make them uneven, we really want to make this village look inhabited. And to do that, we're going to have to go over everything we've done so far. So we're starting with the inn and all the cobblestone layouts that Mikomega had left when he came by uh, on the server. Um, this, what I'm building at the moment, for example, could be another stairwell. Or it could be, uh, I don't know, rooms that simply stick out one extra block in that spot. On the bottom right, we can see another bit that, uh, I don't know, it could be a storefront, for example. Even though the building is an inn, it wouldn't be surprising to have different buildings all mashed together. But, to be honest, it will probably be up to you to decide what it was, or what it is, uh, when you download the map. Because you will be able to download the map, and um, if you use it on a server, for example, you might want to use it uh, as a shop, if you have plugins, for example. And there's something else that many of you spoke of, chimneys. Indeed, they were forgotten on every single house. It just constantly slipped my mind. But chimneys are finally appearing in the village, uh, just about everywhere, I guess. Uh, you will also notice that the smoke uh, that's made out of cobwebs always goes in the same direction, away from the sea. And what I tried to do, which was interesting, is every time, uh, if the smoke was pushed against the roof of the building, I changed the blocks to darker wood planks to simulate the fact that the smoke would have damaged the roof over time. Uh, about the chimneys, you may also notice that some have smoke, others don't, because not everyone has a fire going at the same time. Again, we're just going for maximum realism possible. So I'm going around adding chimneys uh, and dormers, which are interesting because they break up the very big chunks of flat roof, uh, which, I mean, I guess flat roofs like that are realistic, but they're just not that interesting to look at. Uh, definitely not in Minecraft. We have to change the way we do things in Minecraft compared to real life. I could have added skylights as well, actually. Now that I think of it, I might go back and do just that. Now this is something that was asked for a lot. Gallows. I thought this square right in front of the fort would be perfect. Not the most cheerful subject, but the Middle Ages are not known for their cheerfulness. On the side, you also have pillories, the contraption in which people bent forwards and stick their heads and arms in holes. I wasn't sure on the design because it's so hard to put detail in such small structures, so I ended up leaving three different variants, just for the fun of it. Now something else that you may have noticed since the beginning in the roofs is the blocks. I've been changing them to break the perfect uh, linear feel. That means a slab here, a block there, uh, turning a, a staircase upside down somewhere else to give it a soul in a way. So you might think that the village looks run down, uh, which <laughs> to be honest might be true. But remember that it is the Middle Ages, and even though this is a wealthy neighborhood, um, I find it looks good when things are broken up here and there. So finally, we start to tackle the main square of the village, which isn't the market as some thought. This is where all the different axes come together, including the river behind the camera where the bridge to the castle will be. So to me, a large square rhymes with a large fountain. Uh, the single well in the village, in our well, in the neighborhood that's to the right, or like in back of the camera, for me that single well is not enough. So I'm building a fountain in the middle that was designed by Mimi Nala and myself. Mimi Nala is another uh, architect of the team, and I just I think it looks really good, and it m more importantly, it really fills the space. And something that was not done at the time in episode 2 was a toll booth for the bridge. I thought about it at the time but forgot while I was building, and you noticed it and requested it a lot. 
So during the Middle Ages, you needed to pay to go across a bridge and enter a town or a village. So toll booths on the freeway are not something new. Someone stayed there during the day and let you in against a sum of money. So that's why we have the little hut. Anyway, I'm still changing the roofs and making them look better. And you may have seen me put uh, just junk in the streets. It's a bit strange. It looks like every single street is littered with things. But in Minecraft, it's the best way to fill the space. You can simulate garbage stacked up, things like that, to make sure that you don't just have grass everywhere. That's not, that doesn't feel right. And coming up on the main square, you can see me adding trees. Now, that again is not necessarily realistic, but I just think it feels nice. And it's nice to have greenery around town. So once again, we cross the bridge, coming in from the fields towards the growing village. Now the bridge is actually starting to be quite old. Uh, that was eight episodes ago. But the little hut now has made it complete. And here you can see everything I put in the streets to just fill them. I did tend to use the same types of blocks over and over again. Uh, dispensers, wool, chests, a lot of redstone elements because they aren't full blocks. There's an enchanting table as well. Again, not a full block. And here's the neighborhood from above. I feel like it now really has a soul, uh, a story, and much more than when it was too perfect. So here's the inn with which we started the evolution of the village. We can do a lot of changes on it because it's so big, but it's also very straight, very linear. I wonder if I might not change it even more in the future. And here's our mini park. It really adds to the axis coming from the market, which is diagonal and not straight. That's really interesting in Minecraft because of the blocky aspect. Crosses are so easy to make. So behind the tree, you can actually see the block where people's heads would be cut off if they committed terrible crimes. The placement is also thought through. It's on the main square and it's right across from the castle. And here is the other square at the foot of the fort with all the pillories and the gallows, with even someone hanged. And not just anyone. Is it the end of Let's Time Lapse if Bill Silverlight has been hanged? Well, no, of course not. We are only at the halfway point of the season at episode 10. Um, I estimate that the whole season should be 20 episodes. And this second half will only get bigger. I have a lot of great things planned for future episodes, and I want this 10th episode to be a turning point in the series. It changes the whole feel of the village, adds a lot of details, and something else that I want is a name for the village. Now, a lot of you asked whether I would choose the name or whether you would get to choose it. But in my mind, secretly, it was always planned to ask you during episode 10. But I do have a few criteria. Now, I only want serious names. Nothing like Silverlight Town or YOLO Swag. Anything like that is completely out of the question. I want something historically accurate down to the name, not only the architecture and the organization. So something medieval and realistic, uh, words perhaps, such as City of Thingy, Moat Something, or names like York, London, etc. Now the other difficulty is that I would like to have a name that works in English and in French, as that is the other language in which I am making Let's Time Maps. Um, that would be awesome, but otherwise I might have to just try and find a trick to make it work anyway because it might be hard to find something that works in both languages. Now the easiest way to submit your names is the comment section. It should be easier than email, uh, Twitter or Facebook. And I read all the comments anyway, so I'll just jot down all the interesting ideas. And that way, within a few episodes, I should have been able to choose. So, to finish off, we're back to the updated map of the village. From above, it doesn't look that different. Sort of, uh, you can sort of see the chimneys and that the roofs are a little different. But the only big change is the main square. It may not look as impressive in terms of changes as, for example, the episode of the fort or the church. But I think that it was very important to do and this really strikes a change in the whole series and the whole feel of the village. So in the next episode, we will finish off the church and the following ones should be just as ambitious. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.